Moving on to chapter eight, locomotion in and on water. Why move? Well, lots of organisms need to move to acquire food, to hunt prey, to avoid predators, to find mates. Um, a lot of the kind of behaviors of individuals, um, trying to understand that is the field of odd ecology. It's not, um, it's not as commonly taught as things like population ecology, community ecology, ecosystem ecology, but it's still really interesting. So since aquatic insects evolved on land and then secondarily invaded aquatic habitats, there is an enormous diversity of adaptations for locomotion both in and on water. So moving in water does though present lots of challenges. It's a lot more challenging to move in water than it is on land or in the air. In some ways, in some ways it's easier, right? So um, anyway, uh, the size of the organism and the particular appendages that it has can both influence the Reynolds number at which they live. So the bigger the organism and the longer the appendages, the higher the Reynolds number. Organisms that we're learning about in this program, insects, um, mostly have segmented legs, but not at all larval stages. Um, those segmented legs can allow them to walk or swim, um, but sometimes just wriggling and you know, undulating is a very efficient method of movement. And then some organisms hitch ride. So we're gonna go through all of these different movements, um, moving on the surface film. And, um, and just keep in mind that one organism might actually end up using lots of different modes of locom locomotion, like in the same day or over the course of its lifetime. So we'll talk about more uh, detail on each of these. So to start off with basic leg structure, um, you have the parts shown in the figure, the coxa, trochanter, femur, tibia, the tarsi, and the tarsal claws. And in insects, um, they have three pairs of legs, and each pair of legs is attached to the different thoracic segments. The leg is covered with an exocuticle, which provides the rigidity against which muscles work, as opposed to in our bodies, that rigidity is provided by our bones. So the rigid parts are on the outside, which is what makes insects interesting. They, their muscles, they either have extrinsic muscles, which connect the, the leg to the body, or they have intrinsic muscles that um, connect the different parts of the leg. And at the joints, the cuticle is soft and flexible, which allows it to move a little bit easier. There are multiple types of joints in insect legs. Um, Monocondylic joints are more like the ball and socket joints that you might have at your shoulder or in your hip. Um, and then there are dicondylic joints that are, are more like hinges, um, like at your knee, that they only move in um, one direction. And insects, um, their body is really suspended in between the legs. If they were moving on land, there would be less push and pull down on their body in water or uh, sorry, there'd be more in water, their body is kind of, um, you know, supported by the water around it. And a lot of organisms use all six legs for locomotion, but some organisms mainly use the back two with the front legs having different purposes, um, things like feeding or digging, um, other things. So it really depends on the organism, whether they're gonna use all six legs for locomotion or just two. So um, it's gonna, this talk's gonna kind of be organized by where the organisms are moving. So we're gonna start off by talking about movement in the water column. So like swimming through the water. So organisms can swim and row both through the water column and along this, across the surface of the water. And when the Reynolds numbers are high, then they use their legs to row and act as paddles. The speed of movement um, depends on the shape of the paddle and how much drag is um, kind of slowing the body down. Kind of like a paddle when you're rowing a boat. So there, um, there is also drag on the paddle that then creates turbulence and vortices um, after the paddle has moved. So when you're rowing a boat, you can see these kind of vortices move off behind the, the paddle. Um, when some organisms are synchronous, they move both of their legs at the same time as shown in the picture at the bottom, and that assures forward motion and it keeps them from going to the right or the left as they row. But there, there are some organisms that swim 
one leg at a time and then they end up going kind of a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left so they have more of a zigzag pattern so both ways there are adaptations for both um, and then I think this is a partial thought we're uh, we're going to move into other methods things like flapping undulation and jet propulsion next so um, a few more things about swimming swimming insects need um, they need to be able to control themselves in three dimensions, just like an airplane. And so there's the, there's rolling, okay? And then there's pitching, which is kind of moving up or down. And then there's yaw, which is kind of a side to side movement. And so um, basically what they're trying to do is avoid all three of these and keep moving in a, a straight line. And streamlining, just like with an airplane, Streamlining can help and appendages on the sides can also help. So that's why swimming and flying kind of sometimes look the same. So swimming legs um, are often flat, flattened, kind of like, a, again, like a paddle. Um, and they are often coated with lots of hairs. And the hairs increase surface area and help create thrust. And so you're getting a wider blade on your paddle. if You have a lot of hairs. And um, a lot of hairs spread out during the power stroke and then they collapse when the organism is bringing it back through the water. So you don't want, kind of like when you're rowing a boat, you want the paddle blade flat as you're pushing through the water and then you bring it like this when you're coming back so that you minimize the drag in the recovery stroke. It's very similar to um, boating. So here we see a dytisid beetle, um, a cilius. You can see those great hairs on the, um, on the legs. And then you can also see a whirligig, whirligig beetle, gyrin, <laughs> gyrinidae. And the gyrinidaes, so the dytisid beetles swim through the water column, the gyrinidaes swim on the surface. And the gyrinidae can swim in packs and they can even communicate through the waves that they create and um, by swimming in these whirling packs, they confuse their predators. There are a few caddisflies we think that move, um, well, we've seen the move through swimming, which seems like a very awkward method of movement for these guys, but you can see this uh, Leptoceridae in particular has a lot of hairs on the forelegs and the forelegs stick out really far. And so it can actually swim through the water surface and it has a streamlined body or sorry, a streamlined case shape can help it move through the water. Um, another way of moving is through undulating. So moving through the water column, you can either um, move side to side like a shark, right? Or you can have an up and down um, undulation, more like a whale. The bending of the body as it undulates generates forces against the water and propels the animal in the opposite direction. And um, here's an image from a paper um, Bracken, by Brackenbury showing damselfly larvae and how they use that caudal, those caudal gill filaments at the end, kind of like uh, a fish's tail acting like a caudal fin. A lot of um, fly larvae dipterans also undulate. And the reason they do that is they don't really have any legs. So um, yeah, it's one of the limited movements that they have. Then there's jet propulsion. So some organisms can propel water um, out of their bodies to allow for very quick movements. This dragonfly and some species of mayflies, they draw water into their hind gut. They're, um, they're breathing that way. So they're, they're pulling water in um, to extract dissolved oxygen, and then they can expel it out of their hind gut, out of their, their butt in basically with these really strong muscles, and it allows them to go really fast in a forward direction. Uh, you can see they don't really have great legs or, um, you know, they don't have hairy legs for swimming. And so this jet propulsion is a really um, quick method. They can move about a half a meter per second, which is really fast. 